Welcome to the walkthrough guide for NSOET. Uh, as you might notice, I'm not actually in NSOET. I am in SOET solo. Um, the reason I'm in solo is because I messed up the first recording. So we're going to be trying this again. Um, I'm going to be trying to keep this video fairly quick, and I will be going through the um, major carpets to dodge, the heal timings, or the purge timings, and the resets. Okay? They're the biggest things here. Uh, as well as this guide, in the description, there is the party compositions guide, which is linked with this, and if you do want to know information about that, then please look at, uh, look at it. Ugh, look at it. Um, so, uh, when you walk into this room, uh, most of your party wants to stand in the back left corner. The reason for this is that we're going to attempt to pull the left boss only, instead of both of them, to reduce the incoming damage. So to do this, whoever's pulling runs up here and waits for the dark orb to spawn on them. If it, there we go. Once it spawns, you hit the one on the left, and then you run to this back corner. As you will notice, uh, I've only pulled this boss on the left rather than both of them. Uh, the reason we pull it over here is so that any bounce skills don't actually hit the other one and accidentally end up aggroing it. So, uh, there are no real carpets to note on this. It doesn't really do much, so you can just kill it once um, you've pulled it. Uh, this boss has a high amount of healing output. Uh, this carpet here, if you get hit by it, will pretty much kill you. Uh, the line carpet is going to uh, turn you into a snail, and other than that, that single target really hurts, and so do the orbs. So if you're a healer, you need to be healing very, very often. Uh, when I play bow support, I pretty much debuff this boss at the start, and then after that, just purely heal, because most of the time, it will be necessary. Other than that, uh, it's a dark boss, just kill it. Next one, um, there is only one thing to note about this boss, and that is the purge timing. I can't click on this boss, hello? Hello, there we go, uh, is the purge timing. So uh, the carpets are pretty simple to dodge, um, but there is one targeted carpet that will give you a debuff, which can be purged by a sork, but is the only way to get rid of it. If you uh, cannot, um, if you do not have a sork, then the other way to do it is to run out and dodge it. I'll show you what I mean when it, when it applies, if it wants to apply, if he wants to use it. Oops, hello, can you use it now? That one. So if you run out of the way, uh, you won't reset the boss and it won't apply because you're too far away. Um, if you do uh, happen to be hit by it, uh, then if a sorcerer purges, which they should be doing if you have a sorcerer, um, then yeah, then it'll just remove it. But as you can see, it stuns me a lot and this is going to make the next 20 seconds of this video highly annoying. Um, when we get into the next room, we're going to be doing a reset as well. So whoever's... Uh, the DPS will be pulling the right one over to about here, where I'm clicking with my mouse, just uh, not this bit, but over here. Um, and the other person is going to be resetting the left one. The way we reset the left one is we attack it once, okay? Uh, when that carpet goes off, we then teleport out the room. Instead of teleporting, you can also run to one of the corners. Uh, I don't know which one's the most consistent. Uh, I, To be honest, I just prefer teleporting out, especially on this one. Um, but as you can see, you can reset them just fine. Once you reset it, you join your DPS and hitting this one. Uh, the one on the right doesn't actually do much, doesn't have any, like, kind of annoying carpets, so don't worry. Uh, this one uh, is going to be a very long fight because of the way the damage reduction on it works. Um, but there isn't many carpets that are uh, too worrisome to dodge. Just make sure you dodge that one, because obviously it's a melee range and it stuns you. And it will probably kill you because you'll then be hit by subsequent carpets. Other than that, pretty self-explanatory fight. The next boss is going to um, is going to apply a heal debuff to you, which makes it very difficult to survive. The ways that we can deal with this are we either a lancer will flame buff, and it will basically hit these creatures that should be stacked in the middle, um, and it can life steal through that, or the healers basically just spam heal and hope for the best. Um, normally, we deal with it by just killing it quickly. Uh, there is no other thing to note. Um, the one thing. Uh, the one extra carpet you do need to be paying real close attention to is there'll be a big circle carpet in the middle. Um, she may or may not use it here. We will find out if she's going to kill me first. Um, but yes, th there'll be a big circle carpet in the middle. Um, and this will basically uh, uh, heal her if you get hit by it. Sorry, I lost my words. Uh, it will heal her and... That's very, very bad. So do not get hit by that. You'll mess your party over as well as yourself. I'm just going to kill it now because she doesn't want to use the carpet. So, uh, But I promise you it's there. Okay, so the reset for this one is, again, whoever's got aggro, we pull the right one to over, over to about here. 
whoever's got the left one is going to wait until she stuns you like that and as soon as you can move you then will tp out the room again uh, i'm not going to do it here because there's no point you can also run to the corner it does the same thing okay or it doesn't because sif has aggro anyway point is <laughs> there should be uh, i'm going to do some right uh there should be um you should reset it doing that and then we'll move on to the flame one so the flame one doesn't actually have any carpets that i need to talk about just kill it um the storm one uh there is one carpet worth noting obviously the mini stun i mentioned but uh the one carpet worth noting is there'll be a circle on the floor in a minute that will spawn tornadoes if you get hit by it and will mess the melee over do not be hit by it okay the next boss absolutely no carpets worth noting here she has a knock up but it's not really important um so yeah uh this one is the first one that kind of matters uh this is where you need to start paying attention as a healer because the healing output in this fight will be very large um when she does the um line carpet that heals at this one you should be casting heal as soon as you see that providing you're not in carp uh in a carpet that will kill you okay um the reason for this is that pretty much every time someone will either be forced to get hit by it or will accidentally get hit by it so just healing afterwards is going to make sure everyone will be on full hp um there is also the uh koto buff which not in this mode but in in party mode will make you leap on somebody uh as soon as you see that it needs to be purged it's very difficult to see it on other people, so instead of um, waiting for it to apply as a sorcerer, you should pretty much just be permanently purging over and over and over again. Um, yeah. The other carpet is going to be the circle carpet, um, or the this one. If you get hit by it, it's going to kill you. And solo it won't, but you can see it stunned me the first time. Um, it does lots and lots of damage, and it will kill you. If you do have that Koto debuff, you might end up leaping into it and dying anyway. Um, that's pretty much this fight. Um, the Kusa one, we tend to reset before we start, or in the other one, it's, I don't remember, Hermes, I think. Um, the reason we reset is because we want to uh, use a Dun. So a Dun gives 8 seconds of debuff immunity. We're not looking for damage immunity, we're just looking to not pick up the debuff that makes you take a lot of extra um, speed debuff and stuns you and does all kind of things you don't want. So the way we do this is you need minimum 2 three is very useful of a duns that are preferably the same level but don't have to be um, if they are the same level the way it's going to work is the first person will use a dun oh by the way i should also note that when you do some of the duns if you have a bow or or a shuriken or anyone that has a speed buff they should be casting it on your duns to reduce the cooldown time so the first person casts it okay and then they put it on auto cast once this has been cast you run in and start the fight the second person, after you uh, after you start running in, waits in about seven seconds until this first buff's going to run out, and then casts their one. What this is going to do is it's going to uh, refresh the debuff, or the immunity, sorry. Um, and that will mean that for 16 seconds, you're then fully immune, and then as soon as the 16 seconds are up, the next person will start casting it, or the next idol will start casting it. <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory, really. Um, so yeah, if you have three of them... Uh, you can use the third one, I don't know, about like four seconds in or whatever to the, the second cast just to make sure that that gap is covered. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for cheesing the debuff thing on this fight. Uh, it's it You don't need to do it to clear this fight, but it is extremely useful. Even if you don't do the debuff cheese, I would recommend running a done for this fight because it's eight seconds where you won't stack if you drop a Lancer Mac or something. So yes, very, very useful uh, for this fight. Other than that, as a healer, just spam healing. Um, there's no other way around it. If you're a healer, don't focus on debuffing, just spam healing. You don't want to take those stacks of speed slow, otherwise your AoE heal will be much reduced. So don't even worry about hitting the boss, just keep people alive. Okay, for the final boss, um, there are a few things that you need to be thinking about. First of which, do not stun, do not use CC do not sleep anything okay anything that will stop the boss from moving or doing its thing uh don't use because we'll need to be stunning this boss when the carpet comes up okay i'll get into that when it comes up but for now uh the first carpet she's going to do is this when it targets and hits somebody it's going to drop not the idolons it doesn't do it for that but if you notice here it's going to drop this uh golden circle on the floor 
in NSOET, that really hurts every melee. Or, well, not at melee, but everybody. But normally, this will be dropped in melee range, because you'll have probably a lance and maybe another melee. Um, and you can be hit even if somebody else is targeted, okay? So if you see it underneath you or anywhere, do not run into it, run away from it. So if you stand here and you're not the melee, then you need to move away. This carpet is the one you need to uh, stun, because as you can see here, it reduces her damage received by a lot, and it heals her, okay? Conveniently, that carpet happens once every 30 seconds, and stun block happens to be 30 seconds long, which is why we can keep stunning her out of it, okay? So next time she casts it, I'll stun her, and she won't be able to get the heal off, or I will try to, which should be about 30 seconds after the last one, so very soon. I'll be quiet until then, promise. There it is, stun her out of it, and we're good. So yeah, that's pretty much that fight in a nutshell. Uh, it can do a lot of damage if you be hit by carpets, but normally it is just dodge red carpets, and that fight is very simple. Dodge carpets, do not stun, simple fight. That's pretty much it for the guide. I hope this was helpful and not too ranty, and if you do have questions, please look in the description. If you want to know more about party composition or recommended party compositions for this, link's in the description. Uh, you can PM me on Discord as well if you do have questions. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll speak to you next time.